Hi, my name's Adrian. Welcome to Power Director 9. Today we're going to look at subtitles. If we want to overlay subtitles into our video and synchronize them with the dialog, we have to work in the subtitle room. To get to the subtitle room, we can scroll down until we get to the subtitle room tab, or alternatively, we can press keyboard F12. This opens up the subtitle room for us to work in. It also opens up the subtitle track which gives us the subtitle placement and duration. We can switch off the subtitle track by right-clicking on the track manager and ticking or unticking the appropriate box. There are 13 subtitles in this small project at the moment, so how are we going to achieve this? Let's have a look in more detail. In PowerDirector 9 we have three choices of producing subtitles. We can use an SRT file, we can use the PowerDirector subtitle room F12, or we can use the subtitle room and a plain text file. Let's look at the SRT files. So let's look at an industry standard SRT file produced by PowerDirector 9. As you can see, it looks a little bit complicated. Let's see if we can simplify it. Here's the first entry. It still looks quite complex. The time entries are done in hours, minutes, seconds, and milliseconds. So when we look at the whole format, we have the subtitle number, number 1, the start time, 400 milliseconds, the end time at 2 seconds, 2 milliseconds, and the subtitle text. We can also use a plain text file to import our subtitle text into a PowerDirector 9 project. Unlike an SRT file, we cannot use a start time or an end time and each subtitle has to appear on a separate line in the text file. In order to successfully use a text file, we must predefine our subtitles in the subtitle room in PowerDirector 9 and then import the text to the predefined subtitles. And we'll look at that later on. Let's look at the subtitle room itself first of all. We have a column for start time, column for end time, and the subtitle text. We can choose at this point the type of subtitle that we wish to have, whether one that's incorporated into our video or for disk production. These icons on the right hand side allow us to add a series of subtitles during playback, change the text format, add a subtitle at the current position of the timeline scrubber, remove the selected subtitle, go to the previous, go to the next, import an SRT or a text file and export as an SRT file. When we are working with subtitles we can set the default subtitle duration. We select Edit, Preferences, Editing and the subtitle box allows us to choose a value. The default is 10 seconds. For our first example we're going to manually set both timings and subtitle text. I've already reviewed my video and worked out my timings. My first subtitle needs to start at frame 12. I must move my timeline scrubber to frame 12 which we can see here we select the plus icon to add the subtitle at the current position and you will immediately notice it isn't 10 seconds long and that's because there is a split in the video here. If I need it to be 10 seconds long I can get hold of the right hand boundary and drag it or indeed if I want it to be a shorter I can lessen it by moving towards time zero. However I know exactly what time I require and I'm going to manually set it in the end time column. Double click on the seconds and type in 0, 2, 0, 0. So my clip will start at 12 and end at 2 seconds. Let's enter the subtitle text. I double click and type in my text to match my dialogue. So, good morning once again. 
and when I click off that it appears in the subtitle track and it also appears in my preview window here and that's adding a subtitle manually our next method for entering subtitles is to manually enter the start time and end time and fill in the subtitle text from a text file. There are two methods to manually enter our start and end time. Let's look at one of them. I want to start my next subtitle at 2 seconds and 8 frames. I can enter 02, 08 in the preview time track here and when I exit out of that my timeline scrubber will move to the start point. I can then select the plus sign and my next subtitle will start at 0208 and I can adjust it by dragging the boundaries or I can choose 0420 as it happens the end of this clip and we still have to enter our subtitle text. The alternative method is to use the playback method where we play through our video and select and add a series of subtitles. The timing is not going to be as precise but we can adjust it later. And that is used like this. Okay, I'm under the Pontesesta and looking down the... Uh, so we select these each time and that will give us another three start time, end time and entries that we have to fill. Whichever method we've used to enter our start time, end times, and we have adjusted them on our subtitle track, we still have to enter our subtitle text from a text file. If you remember earlier, our text file has each subtitle on a separate line. We move to the import icon, we open our text file, it will replace all the existing subtitle text, we press OK, and PowerDirector 9 will automatically fill each subtitle in order as laid out in the text file. Our third method is to use an industry standard SRT file. Again from earlier on, the SRT file has this format. You will notice the difference that the SRT file has milliseconds here whereas PowerDirector always works in frames. We use the same import icon. We can then select our SRT file select open and the SRT file will be read by PowerDirector 9 and it will give us our start times end times and subtitle text all in one operation you will notice PowerDirector has converted the milliseconds to frames it will also if you want to export to an SRT file it will convert the frames to milliseconds to give you an industry standard file. Thank you for watching. I hope you found it useful.